Lovely. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to uh, another session here at the PC Games End Theatre. Um, and this is how to get into games journalism. Um, before we get started, I want to take a quick straw poll, if I may, since this is a slightly more vocational panel, I suppose, than some. Um, if you are comfortable doing so, would you like to put a hand up if you are uh, actively sort of looking to get into games journalism and you know wanting to? Okay, great, cool, cool, cool. Um, I'll leave lots of uh, time for questions then, because I want to be. Uh, we all want to make sure this is as helpful for you guys as possible. But um, so we'll 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 start, I suppose, with some introductions. Uh, if uh, everyone on the panel could please give their name um, and their current job title and their current responsibilities, um, starting, I guess, from way over on the left. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, Joe Robinson. Uh, I'm strategy editor at PC Games N, and I'm currently a member of the guys team. That work for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jen Rothery. I am Acting Guides Editor at PC Games N, so I look after the guides team, writing all the guides. Hi, I'm Imogen Donovan. I work for Gaming Bible as the Acting Snapchat Editor, um, and I'm responsible for the Snapchat shows and the Snapchat stories that you see on the Discover panel. Cool. Uh, and my name is Richard Scott Jones. Uh, I'm the editor of PC Games N. Um, I've been hosting panels and stuff, so if you've come along and, and you, you may have seen me, um, but I haven't introduced myself until now, which is very rude, so hello. Um, I think we'll, we'll start by um, asking each of us to give a brief recap of how we got into the, the, the games industry, because uh, media industry rather, because we've um, all had very different routes in, and I think it sort of you know, makes clear how many avenues there are to get uh, a, a job or, uh, or a bunch of commissions as a freelancer within games media. So. Uh, Stop the <laughs> okay. um, so yeah, I think I was always very interested in games. Obviously, everyone here is going to be interested in games. Um, and then I stumbled across a website called FemHype, who was like very focused on feminist critique of uh, video games and video game culture. Um, and I was reading their work, and I then messaged um, the creator of the site. I was like, "Oh, have you ever thought about um, maybe examining The Sims uh, for their like?" Um, for the way that the characters are written. Um, and they were like, well, you could write for us. And so I did, and it was like a volunteer position. I met lots of very lovely people, and it was a really great place to get um, you know, writing out there, get like a portfolio started. Um, and then I started writing for my like, science and technology section and gaming section for my uni paper. Um, and then after that, after uni, um, I started at Video Gamer in 2019 um, as the news writer. Uh, and then after that, I then joined Gaming Bible as journalist um, in late 2020, uh, and then moved on to being acting Snapchat editor for the time being. Cool, lots of different positions, mix of experience. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Uh, Jen? Yeah, so my journey into games journalism was quite unusual, I think, um, because I was, I, was, I was a couple of years ago, I was looking for a change in careers, and I saw a job ad for a staff writer position at PC Games N um, in Bath, which is where I live, and I thought, huh, writing about games, that sounds great, like, I love games, I love writing, but I'd never written an article before, I'd never been published, anything like that, I was just complete noob, so I applied, um, and because I had no experience whatsoever, I kind of crafted a, a bespoke writing sample. I spent loads of time over it. I sent it around like all my friends and family to, to check, uh, to see if it made sense. Um, and then I sent it off. And I got an interview, which was amazing, with, uh, with Rich here. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> um, so uh, at the interview, I quickly realized that I didn't know the first thing about what actually went into uh, running a site and being part of a site and the kind of like behind the scenes editorial stuff. Um, but I, <laughs> I, I learned a lot uh, and I felt like it was it, you know, a positive experience, but I didn't get the job um, for obvious reasons. I didn't know, <laughs> you know, I'd never done it before. Um, so I kind of, I had, I had a good interview, I had a good um, writing sample. Eventually, they, uh, they reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in doing some uh, temporary freelance work full-time from the office to help on the guides team with some uh, little CMS bits and pieces, uh, which, of course, I said yes, because it's a dream come true. Um, and so from there, I, uh, I learned basically everything I needed to know about writing for a site, and, and they let me write things, which was very kind of them, um, eventually. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, after my, my freelance period ended, 
uh, shortly after they offered me a uh, full-time staff writer position, which is amazing. Um, so that was about two years ago. Uh, since then, I have uh, moved up to deputy guides editor and am now acting guides editor. So yeah, that's me. Yeah, it was, um, it, as, as, as Jen mentions, and we'll come on to this later, like, um, you hadn't had a lot of experience um, or, or, or bylines or anything published, but it was obvious to all of us in the room and, and from her writing uh, sample that there was a hell of a lot of talent there. So, you know, that's the thing to focus on and like it sticks in the mind. Um, and so, you know, we, we'll talk about particular pieces of advice in just a second, but uh, I know you're going to talk about the importance of developing writing um, ability and, and, and skills and stuff. So, you know, you don't need a wealth of experience, and I want to make clear that, you know, as long as you've got, you know, the talent and the enthusiasm and the drive, the barriers to entry may be a lot lower than you think. Um, Joe. Uh, my career has been uh, almost nomadic. I've been uh, over a lot of places, but it started in 2008. <laughs> um, I was at uni. I actually went and did uh, multimedia journalism at university, um, not for any particular reason. Uh, I kind of had a vague idea coming out of sixth form that I wanted to tell stories and maybe be a bit more respectable with it. So I went in terms of journalism instead of being an author or anything, even though I've always wanted to write a book, I just never have. But, um, uh, but uh, about halfway through my uh, three-year course, I realized that the uh, most likely career waiting for me was going to be in local news, like local newspapers, local radio stations. Uh, and the thought made me want to cry, because it's actually quite boring. Um, but I was in my room uh, reading an issue of Games TM, the uh, sadly defunct magazine from Imagine Publishing. Um, who were based in Bournemouth as well, where I went to uni, um, and it occurred to me that someone got paid to make that magazine, and then from <laughs> then on, I was like, I want to do that. Uh, and from then, I kind of uh, hustled my way onto a freelance jobs board, uh, despite the fact that I wasn't actually a, a games freelancer, but I, I got on there, uh, lied about it, it was fantastic, uh, and then got some uh, gigs from there, and my career just kind of spiraled and, and developed from there, but... Um, I really threw myself into it because for my final year dissertation, I did it on uh, games journalism and, and games media, which was a really fascinating way to immerse myself into the world uh, quite quickly. Um, and I you know, talked to people from like GameSpot, from GamesTM, uh, loads of people just to kind of get that dissertation together. So that's, that's kind of how, how I got started. Cool. Uh, and then uh, my path in, um, I had sort of vague aspirations to um, uh, join uh, the games uh, media that had no real idea of how to do so and no pathway until I stumbled across um, a jobs board. Uh, I think it was called uh, uh, gamesjournalismjobs.com or it's something, something very obvious. That's probably not exactly what it is. Um, but uh, similarly to Imogen, um, my path was through voluntary sites. So there are these job boards where you will find uh, people who have set up blogs uh, or, or, or small-scale sites at sort of um, the lower tiers of, of scale and traffic uh, where they you know, may not feel they're able to um, offer paid positions. Um, and I mean, I, I, I can talk a little bit about that path in and sort of red flags to look out for because there's a lot of exploitation out there. But because it gave me my break, I can't really say don't do it under any circumstances. All I would say is just make sure that you're getting something out of it and um, uh, you know, be prepared to walk away when you're not. Like, if they're not paying you, then you owe them nothing. But the reality is that um, after you know, uh, roughly a year, to be honest, of, of going to shows like this, I covered Rezzed uh, as part of the site that I worked for. Um, I, you know, within three months of starting, I was sent off to a press trip in London to interview Randy Varnell from um, Gearbox uh, for the um, Battleborn UK press launch. And it's like, I found my head spinning at the time. I, I had no idea that just by advertising, like uh, answering a, a, a job ad for an unpaid position, I could be, you know, interviewing a creative, chief creative officer of a, of a major US um, developer publisher. So that was really interesting. I think I got lucky in hindsight, because the website that I refer to, which is now defunct and off the internet, was set up by a former uh, section editor of a magazine. So he had loads of, he, he, he took himself seriously, he knew what he was doing, he had a um, bunch of good press contacts and was able to offer me a lot of opportunities. And that built up a good portfolio. Um, I started applying with it when you know, I wasn't interested in working for free anymore and I couldn't see what more I was getting out of it. Um, and there were a couple of sites that were advertising for vacancies. One of them was PC Games N. I started as a staff writer in 2016 and um, have sort of worked my way up and 
that, that, that's all, all it was. So yeah, I mean, voluntary sites can be a good way in, but do make sure that you are getting good opportunities um, and you're learning the trade and uh, you, that you feel you're getting something out of it, something out of the, um, something out of the experience, and you know, don't be afraid to walk away. Because uh, what you can always do is pitch, um, and you can pitch to sites that will actually you know, pay you and commission you. And we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, commissioning advice, I suppose, and pitching advice as well. Uh, because that's you know, a better way, probably, of getting some um, exposure and getting some articles up and actually getting you know, paid for your time. So uh, we will go around the group again and uh, offer sort of one or two pieces of advice, an obvious or overlooked competency to develop, uh, a thing to do, a pitfall to be wary of, uh, and then we'll go to you guys for questions. Um, although I'm sure we could all talk for ages about it, but like I say, I want, um, I want to give you guys a chance to ask us things. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll start with, with pitching advice. Uh, Start, I suppose, by you know, researching the outlet that you're thinking of um, pitching to. Um, most outlets will have um, uh, sort of, uh, we on PC Games then have a how to pitch us guide, um, which, and we have an about us sort of uh, site map which tells you, you know, who's in charge of each section, who has commissioning powers, who to pitch to. Um, be very, very clear about uh, you know, what you're offering um, and, and understand who to sort of offer it to. Uh, I prefer to have a sort of a clear hook set out in the sort of first paragraph um, and then a couple of paragraphs underneath expanding on the concept. Uh, we prefer to see, receive them one at a time um, and talk a little bit about you know, why you are uh, able to uh, deliver on the idea, um, talk about the intended audience for it, um, and then talk about uh, if there are any sort of ex exigencies like um, you know, an interview that you're going to search for. Um, and then, yeah, start the conversation with us that way. Um, uh, come, yeah, let's, uh, I'm rambling on long enough. Uh, let's uh, sort of bring in someone else um, on their pieces of advice. Um, I think we were going to move uh, from pitching advice on to, was it Jen to talk about writing advice? Yeah, well, I also um, wanted to speak a little bit about pitching because as a uh, guides writer, guides editor, I think you should pitch guides because mm -hmm. it's pretty, um, there's, there's so many opportunities to write guides. Editors are always looking for guides covering um, upcoming new content, um, the latest game, so you can kind of anticipate these, particularly if there is a game that you're really, really into, um, especially live service games like Fortnite or, or Final Fantasy or, or Genshin Impact or something like that. If you really know this game and you're aware that there's an update coming up that introduces like new characters, new, new quests, new you know, all, all that kind of thing, then you can, you know everything that you need to know to write that guide for, for an outlet. So all you need to do is, is kind of put yourself forward as, as an expert, as someone who's, who's clued up, um, and, and you can pitch in anticipation of new content or around new uh, games that have come out that might be a little bit under the radar that, you know, kind of go viral. There's loads of opportunities there. So I would say when pitching guides specifically, um, you don't, like, so I never had a byline or anything like that, so, pe but people will want to see um, your, like a sample of your writing. You know, that, that's one of the most important things because as an editor, it's, it's so nice to receive work where you're like, ah, oh, this, is, this is all clean, it's, um, it, it, it's accurate, it's, it makes, our lives a lot easier, and also it has you know some some extra kind of um, passion and and expertise in there as well. Um, so be sure to always uh, either link to or include a writing sample, um, and also introduce yourself and say why you're um, an expert in in this game. You, you know, like your experience and also other games that you're into as well, because often you know we'll, we'll have people who we go to for for certain games and then we we get to know them and then we realize hey you're really into mmos so whenever there's a new mmo we'll think ah oh, this person they're gonna you know potentially be heading to this game and checking it out so you kind of build up these relationships and you get this you know areas of expertise over time um and that's something that i think uh is is you know like a great way to get to build up a reputation build up your bylines and, and get more and more work kind of off the back of what you do. Um, but what I will say is that I can't overstate the importance of, of the quality of writing, right? Like, 
that's kind of the impression that you make on, on a site, on an individual editor, it means so much because it's that individual editor's job to, to take that work and, and help it fit the site mold. And the easier you make that for them, and the more fun you make that for them, if you put some stupid jokes in, like I, I don't know, <laughs> maybe not appropriate with all guys, but um, then the better, basically. So, so you kind of, you build up such a, a positive relationship that they will come back to you and say, hey, this person's like completely on it for, for this game or that game, and the copy is great. Um, and if you've got really excellent copy and there's a lot of personality and there's a lot of initiative, then people, commissioning editors, are going to be interested in working with you on mm. basically anything. Um, you know, like the sky's the limit, really. There's going to be a lot of, of, of trust built up, and um, you'll find yourself, you know, with, with more and more opportunities. Um, so I think, as a, as a fundamental, it's super important to get that down. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's, it's there, there are two fundamentals, really, to, to what we do that I think is common across all of us, although I know, uh, Imogen, you're going to talk a little bit about um, developing other skills. But um, writing is one, and gaming knowledge is the other. Um, and those are the two things that we can't really teach. I mean, you know, editors uh, will help sort of polish up your writing and sort of maybe hopefully take it to the next level. But it's really, really difficult to like, you know, obviously it goes without, it's, it goes without saying that, you know, we expect everyone who applies to be, you know, a passionate, committed, long-time gamer who's going to know uh, PC gaming, in our case, um, inside and out. And if you're not that, then it raises questions about, like, why you're looking to get into the business. But also, it's something that we can't really catch you up on. Um, and equally, like, getting to a certain level of, of, of writing ability and, like, sort of being able to write clean, fun, entertaining copy, um, you know, we can editors and hopefully you'll, you'll grow within the role and editors will be able to help you out, maybe take you up to the next level, but getting that fundamental is key. Um, and if you've got those two things, then honestly you will stand out for, we're, we're hiring right now on PC Games N um, for uh, a, um, uh, well, we'll have a couple of entry level roles coming up soon. Um, and we're taking a look at all the applications and you know those two and paying attention to the application and writing a tailored one, um, just get those three things and then like, you'll stand out above probably 90% of candidates. It's true that it's a competitive job because it's fun, and like we do get a lot of applicants for every role, but I, the, the only thing I'd say is don't let that deter you, because because it's an enjoyable job, we also get a lot of aspirational candidates. Um, and so if you can hit those fundamentals, writing ability, gaming knowledge, and writing a tailored, don't scatter gun or writing a tailored application to each approach. Um, you, yeah, you'll really put yourselves in a really good position, as you know, from my experience at least. Um, but yes, Imogen, tell us a little bit about um, uh, Gaming Bible's perspective on all of this and on sort of cultivating other skills. And yeah, for sure. Like uh, Jen and yourself have talked about um, honing skills um, and you know, finding your niche. Uh, there's a lot of talk about finding niche in terms of like maybe it's JRPGs, maybe it's uh, real-time strategy games, um, but. One thing that I'd like to raise is um, cultivating your other interests, um, be they comic books, uh, photography, film, fashion, history. I'm sure like lots of you have found new interests over lockdown as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I bring that up for like two reasons. Um, number one being that when someone's hiring, it's very rare that they're going to be doing a tick box exercise. Can this person do the job? Cracking, let's get them in. They want to know who you are. They want to know your interests. They want to know your passions. What makes you click? Are you going to gel with this team? Um, and you find that sense of self from developing other interests. Like absolutely, gaming can be your core interest. It can be um, the most important thing. Um, however, if you are really passionate about cooking, um, or if you're really passionate about um, films, that will also shine through and make you much more personable in an interview or much more personable even in your writing, which is like the second thing I want to raise about cultivating your interests, um, being that like those things will uh, feed into your style, will feed into the personality that comes across when you write. Um, and yeah, there's, I know I said two, technically there's three things <laughs> just to be aware of in terms of like pitfalls. Um, if you're watching um, The Batman, or if you're watching uh, Bridgerton, and you're thinking, like, this is, this is just like that, or, you know, why, why don't we have a game about this? Um, and you're thinking about what you could pitch to a, a site, or you, what you could pitch to that site, 
try not to fall into the pitfall of like seeing everything as content because you will burn out in that regard. Like you will take the things that are relaxing or helped, helped you to unwind um, and then they'll just become an outlet for you to write as well. Like your brain will just always be on. Um, and that, that applies to events like these as well. Like come here, have a nice time first and then collect people's cards and emails afterwards. Like really still make this fun, still make this like a nice thing for you to do and still gain a lot of enjoyment out of it. Like it's a very competitive field. Um, it's, there's a lot of honing your skills that happens over, you know, several years and like really understanding um, the landscape, but still have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Joe, uh, yeah, uh, I know you're going to talk a little bit about sort of relationships and, um, and uh, networking and things. Yeah, what's your big advice? Yeah, so um, I was in the kind of fortunate position where I was close to London. I could attend the London event scene quite regularly back in the before times when it was kind of uh, more of an established thing. Um, I would say that I kind of built my career on that period of my free, uh, freelance life where I was able to go to events, meet uh, other games journalists, but also PRs. Um, uh, one thing uh, Jen did point out when we were discussing uh, kind of talking points is that relationships and building and those relationships and networking, it, it won't make you better at your job, it won't like teach you to write better, but it will open up opportunities for you to get your work in front of people so that you can get that feedback, so that you can uh, find your niche or, or find an outlet for um, whatever it is you want to try and specialise in. Um, so obviously uh, the, the nature of events, specifically in networking, is changing slightly now that we're coming out, out of this pandemic period. Um, there's been a great reception to WASD and, and, and events like this one, so hopefully uh, st uh, big groupings like this can continue and you can uh, meet people at places like this, you know, uh, make contacts, uh, cultivate uh, opinions and skills and um, uh, just kind of t talk with your peers, like just being able to talk to other aspiring games writers and existing games writers and commissioning editors as well. It's it can't be uh, un undervalued, you know. It's it's quite it's quite good. But um, another thing I, I did want to kind of hit home is that we have uh, four game journalists here. We have four very different entries into this uh, business. There's some commonalities, you know, like uh, volunteer sites and that. But if you went and found four more game journalists, I uh, know we've got some hiding in the back. Uh, their journey into this business is going to be just as different. There, there is no path, there's no manual you can follow. You get in the way you get in, and that's fine. Um, but the important thing to understand is, uh, one, what you can offer. Uh, and you don't have to worry too much about being able to offer something that literally no one else can offer, even though that would be great if you do find a niche like that. You've just got to be good at something, because of subject matter expertise knowledge, it always comes through in writing. Like, I, mm. I can read two different articles on the same subject, and I can tell who actually knows the subject and who's just, you know, passing knowledge or maybe just done a bit of research. Um, so, uh, understanding what it is you can offer and then understanding what sites actually want or need, um, you know, it, it's great if you're an expert in strategy games. I, I am an expert in strategy games, is what I built my career on, uh, but I know the limits of what I can do with that if I was freelancing, if I was pitching. You know, strategy, you know, um, Civ Six is one of the most uh, popular strategy games uh, around right now. Uh, it still pales into comparison to Elden Ring, to Fortnite, to Genshin Impact. You know, you need to know the limits of of, of what your subject, of what your expertise is, and you need to marry that with what sites actually want. Um, you know, Jen was absolutely right. A guide is a great way into uh, getting regular freelance work. Uh, there are always guides to be written, and I'm sick and tired of writing them. So if you <laughs> want to pitch and take some of that work off me, that would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of uh, yeah. Networking is important, but also understanding that uh, you don't need to follow someone else's path, like. My path is bonkers, don't follow mine. You know, uh, Richard and Jen have slightly more normal uh, kind of entries into this business, but again, that might not be appropriate for you depending on your circumstances. So um, uh, yeah, find your own way, understand what it is you can do, but understand what sites want and need because that's what they're gonna be paying for. You know, they have their goals, they have their strategies, and that's where the money is gonna be available for freelance work. Yeah, P picking up on, on both that point and on um, Imogen's, I guess there's developing broad, universally useful knowledge and then there's developing a niche, um, and, or multiple niches. Uh, I, there's a freelancer that um, 
is, is a guy called, I'll name him, Phil Ivaniuk. He's an amazing writer and he knows racing games to like the most amazing minute level of detail where he can analyze, you know, um, the limits of grip and like, you know, soil deformation under tires and things. It's crazy. And like he, he knows that he knows that genre that well, and yet there are so few really, really good authoritative racing game um, uh, uh, commentators in the business that any time a new racing game comes out, he's first in line, and like he can pick his, he can he can you know pick his commission whether it's you know writing for us or for PC Gamer or for whoever. Um, so that's super useful. As Imogen says, um, you know if you if you love cooking, then you know you'll be the first person that a site puts on or approaches to uh, to commission for a piece on Overcooked or something. Um, uh, you know, gaming is universal, so your interest as a human being will will find a, an, an outlet to express. But also, it's important to develop uh, a knowledge base on all the games that everyone wants to commission on, like you know, Fortnite, World of Warcraft, um, uh, Genshin Impact these days, Destiny 2, all the big ones. So yeah, um, we can we can keep talking, I'm sure, but. Um, I know you guys are interested in, in getting into it, and we've got a good long chunk of time for questions. So would we, would we like to go to the floor now? Um, if so, stick a hand up. Uh, I'll check our Twitch as well, um, because we there's, there's a stream going. Uh, yeah, would anyone like to ask a question? At the back. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just come, come to the mic. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. That was super interesting uh, to hear. Uh, I guess really a question for the guides element of games writing. Uh, going into guides writing, have you got any real specific tips for that genre particularly? You know, what are the things you really need to look out for when writing guides specifically? Yeah, I think we'll throw that to our acting guides editor. Yeah, um, so as I mentioned before, there's like, there's some things that are kind of, you can anticipate are gonna be of interest to guides writers and to audiences, right? So around major updates in, in live service games, you've got, like for Genshin Impact, you've got the new characters um, that are coming out, right? So we, we do loads of guides on, on those. Uh, in particular, we do, we do like a build guide for them. We do like a guide to when they're coming out. We do a guide to the um, materials that you need to, to level them up and things like that. So um, there's, there's loads of opportunities in, in some, anything that's basically new content that's coming um, that isn't, there's not really like a threshold for like, it has to be this complicated or it has to be this like inaccessible because people will literally Google everything. They, will, they won't even like open the menu in the game to check before they go to Google. They will go to Google first every single time. They Google things that you, you are literally right in front of them. There's no like limit, there's no lower limit to what is too simple for, for a guide because there are people searching for it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think just just kind of like thinking about the content that you, the games that you want to pitch on, and and thinking about what you might Google, you know, just playing through it and think, hey, I would like to know a cool build, or I would like to know how to get past this raid, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, basically, that's a good way to do it. And you can get a sense for what a particular site is going to commission um, by, as Jen says, having a bit of a Google, like. Um, recently, I was look, I, I, <laughs> been playing Elden Ring, um, and uh, I, I think I was looking for something fairly specific um, where a particular sorcery was to be found. And you know, we do guides on PC Games then about pickups and collectibles within Elden Ring and how to find them. But there are some sites out there which will go even more granular than that, and which will look for um, and which, which will put out guides like how to solve a very particular puzzle in a very particular part of a level of a very particular shooter. And like you know, you, you can pitch stuff. I mean. You can pitch stuff that's that niche, but like obviously only sites that are already publishing it are going to accept pitches like that. So if you if you do a little bit of googling and sort of figure out which of those which sites approach guides in that way, um, then uh, that's a probably a good start to you know get some ideas. Um, bear in mind that obviously some sites have a split between doing it in house and, and doing it with freelancers, but you know you put your feelers out there, and I guess that's where you know developing a knowledge of. Uh, what the industry is like and, and, and which sites are approaching things in that way is, is important. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Uh, we've got 600 viewers, it looks like, on, on Twitch, so hello to everyone watching at home. Um, if you want to uh, drop a question into the chat, then please do, don't be shy. Um, are there any more from the floor? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am, sorry. <laughs> 
that was a bit tall. Hello. Um, I've been freelancing in journalism for like six years um, on and off, and I'm trying to get into games journalism as like a staff writer. I've written news and I've written entertainment news, and I do stuff on YouTube about gaming, but I'm finding it really difficult to marry those two things to show that I have the experience to write gaming news. It's not worked so far, so do you have any tips? Um, tips, on, tips on how to demonstrate you have the expertise for, for writing on yeah, games? Yeah, that I know games and I know how to write news, and like just because I haven't done those two things together yet doesn't mean I can't. Okay, well, I'm surprised to hear that you're struggling to demonstrate that. I mean, we, like I say, we'll have a couple of um, uh, staff writer level vacancies coming up on PC Games in, within the next month. Um, maybe if you want to hit me up afterwards and talk a little bit about it, maybe swap info, I, that, that'd be great, and like, I'd welcome an application. Um, in terms of demonstrating it more broadly, um, I mean, f for me, it, it would be enough to have a breakdown of, of your experience in games on uh, your cover letter or something. If you were to say, you know, I've been playing games for 20 years, um, these are my favorites, I know them inside and out, you know, w that would be enough for me. Um, I, I, I guess if you're struggling to find, like, places to publish games writing and sort of point to some clippings, um, you know, if, 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 if you can't find a, a, an outlet to sort of publish that stuff and get a byline, it's really okay, for me at least, when I'm looking for applicants, to sort of start a blog and just put some articles up and say, you know, look, this is something I've already written. Doesn't matter it's not published elsewhere. This is me showing that, you know, I understand the layout of a news piece, the news pyramid and all of that. I know how to format things. I know a little bit about SEO and sort of grabbing Google's stuff. Um, and, you know, here's some added value that I'm putting into this new story based on my experience, you know, linking things in. Um, yeah, I mean, if, I'd be happy to sort of see that um, on, you know, your, an independent blog, um, or you know, just talk about it in your cover letter and things. I don't know. Is that helpful? Um, any other thoughts on, on that? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if you were to write like just like a writing sample of a piece of gaming news and and send that with an application or prospective application to an outlet, then that's a really good way uh, of of demonstrating essentially what you would be passing on to the editor were you to get the job. And I think it can be, I know it's difficult and it's, it can be quite disheartening making lots of applications and, and not being successful, but I think it, you only need to be successful once and then, you, then you've done it, right? So um, there's a lot of perseverance uh, involved in that. Um, but it really is a case of like the right opportunity coming along at the right time and you can do lots of things to make sure that you're in the right position to make the most of these opportunities that, that you come across, whether that's through doing lots of research or, or, or self-publishing things or, or networking as well, um, you know, making sure people know who you are and, and getting advice from people who, who would, you would, might be working with in the future. I mean, so for me personally, like, I would always be happy to, to speak to anyone who was interested in, in pitching um, or might be applying to a job, you know, you can, DM me on Twitter or something, and I'd be happy to like talk through uh, any application anyone's thinking of making or a pitch that anyone's thinking of making. Because I think that can be one of the biggest barriers with between like freelancing and, and staff roles is knowing the internal workings of a site and what exactly goes on. Um, and and that's something you can only really learn from being having it explained to you. So yeah, I'm I'm going to rather shamelessly uh, jump in on that to say that. Um, our staff writer starting salaries uh, at PC Games End are 22,000 pounds, which, as far as I know, to the best of our knowledge, we have not perfect um, visibility on, on what other sites pay, but we are as, as, as confident and hopeful as we can be that that's pretty good. So I'd like to, you know, a anyone who's interested in getting a start, please, I want to hear from you. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't care about being competitive about this sort of thing. I want to I hear from all of you. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, any, any more? Yes. A bit, tall, a bit short for me. Um, I was just wondering, so obviously a lot of the kind of games journalism stuff is about um, kind of, especially guides is the probably good example of it, is about getting those clicks from search engines. It's about, you know, writing about Elden Ring when Elden Ring is popular. Um, 
what's it like when sort of pitching to larger sites when you're covering that sort of more alternative beat of, you know, smaller scale indies, the strange things you find on itch.io? What's it like kind of trying to find a place for that in more mainstream games press where you're less trying to harvest the existing attention for a thing and maybe trying to drive it towards smaller projects? And do you have any tips for how to pitch that to larger sites like yourselves? <laughs> Anyone want to jump in on yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, oh, Joe? Yeah. I feel like I've spoke too much recently. So <laughs> you go for it. Sorry. Um, so I firmly believe that uh, indie game coverage is more viable now than it has been in recent years. Um, there are still limits to that. Like, um, uh, we talk about guides a lot. We talk about search a lot. You, you brought it up. A lot of that is a consequence of Google's presence in our lives, and we can't escape that. But what we can do is boil games down to uh, concepts, terms, um, things like that. And uh, one thing we found is that indie games can also be RPG games. They can also be strategy games. They can also be insert key term here. Um, and that's a, a good way of um, framing things for commissioning editors that makes it more attractive to them. Because uh, I've been a commission editor in the past, I'm not currently, but um, one of the things I was always looking out for is you know, what the angle is, which you mentioned, um, always got to have a good hook. And a part of that is you know, what's, the, what's the key term here, what's the, what's the thing that we think is going to make it uh, fly. You know? uh, ultimately, we want this stuff to get read, and we want it to go in front of as many people as possible. And people search and want information on a wide variety of things. And indie games can fit into all these kind of little buckets. It's just about understanding that and being able to frame and phrase things in a way that kind of aligns with what we look for in, in freelance pitches. Like, it's not all about Elden Ring, although, yeah, it is all about Elden Ring, unfortunately. But, you know, what are games like Elden Ring? You know, uh, what are the el best Elden Ring mods in you know, another game, right? It, 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 people go to Google to ask questions, and you know, part of our job, especially on the guides, is to answer them. But like, you can answer them in, in many different ways, uh, and you can get many different answers in front of people if you know the right tricks. Um, uh, Imogen, you, your work with like, Snapchat and some of the social stuff you do, I imagine you've got a really fascinating perspective on that. I would say we're, but like, when you're pitching something that's smaller in the face of something that's much more prevalent or much more popular is um, that timeliness is really mm -hmm. important. Um, so if you are pitching something that's about, um, yeah, so sorry to use Ellen Ring again <laughs> as an example. Um, but yeah, uh, something that's like a Souls-like indie um, that you really want to spotlight, um, the team's really passionate about it, you've spoken to the team themselves, um, and pitching that at the time where Elden Ring is really, really um, popular would help marry the kind of the, the two halves that we have of like, we would like to create content that gets a lot of interest, a lot of clicks. As we say, like social channels do have a large pro like presence in our lives, as well as showcasing something that is, we are really passionate about, someone else would be really passionate about, and marrying those two together, timeliness I would say it's key, um, and just being aware of like maybe um, anniversaries that are coming up for certain games, um, or like any sort of like world events or like cultural events that are going on, and then just marrying the two together as best you can, um, and that makes it much easier for the editor to be like, right, I can see how this will work, I can see how this will fit in with the rest of our content um, going out either like on Facebook or the website or um, Twitter or Snapchat. Yeah, pa paradoxically, it might all, it might also be um, a good idea to. I mean, it, I I did a very very little bit of freelancing before I got a staff job, so I, I'm 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 good at sort of you know the editor's perspective of incoming pitches, but not so good about pitching outwards. But it, it might be worth considering that paradoxically, the bigger sites are the ones that maybe care least about traffic because they already have a huge footprint. Like IGN and GameSpot are huge and will stay huge. That, that I, I don't see a great deal of indie coverage on either of them, maybe a little bit on IGN. Um, PC Gamer is very good at it, and again, they can afford to be because they're massive. So that might be worth a shot. Um, elsewhere, uh, elsewhere, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, rival of PC Games, and but a fantastic site, and one which has always led the way on indie coverage. Um, yeah, like part of it is scale, part of it is everything these guys just said. Part of it is also just, you know, y y you get a feel for the ones that do 
good indie coverage and care about getting it right. And like we, we do on PC Games then, but we try to make it traffic. And one of the ways that we do it is um, by comparing it to comparing an indie game to an established one to sort of give people a frame of reference. Um, so that's the way that we approach it too. Uh, and yeah, if you can recognize that and reflect that in your pitch, exactly as Joe says. Um, yeah, it's a good tip. We do have uh, a couple of points um, coming in from Twitch. Um, one of our writers, Ian Boudreau, echoed by uh, the editor of The Loadout, one of our sister sites, um, uh, Jess Wells. Uh, they say, um, it can be discouraging as a freelancer, picking up on what, what Jen says, uh, to be, when you, hear, don't, when you don't hear back from editors from pitches, but keep going. Like, we do um, all, all care about you know, finding good talent and publishing it and, and getting people into the industry and finding new voices. Um, it is true that editors are spectacularly busy, but you know, we try, so you know, don't be afraid to give us a little bit of a nudge if it's taking a couple of days, and keep at it. Um, perseverance, I suppose. Uh, any more questions? I think we can maybe take one more, one or two more. Yes, sir, at the back. Uh, I was thinking, when it comes to writing, we say how important it is to know how to write properly. Uh, what other skills would be useful in journalism with like video editing, video creation? Would that be something to consider as well? Um, to a degree. I mean, it, it depends on the site and its specialisms. And I think Imogen, you'd be, you'd be good to talk about this because you, Gaming Bible publishes on a huge range of platforms. It, if you didn't catch, if you went around yesterday, um, Imogen and her colleague uh, Dean did a great talk on the future of games media, um, which was uh, food for thought from someone who comes from a site that isn't active on those platforms quite so much. Um, but you can catch up on all of that when we publish the um, VODs of uh, all of Wasley if you missed it. But yes, Imogen. I'd say that like honing those sorts of skills such as like video editing is very, very useful because it gives you something else that you can contribute to the team. So absolutely, you would, if you were honing your skills in journalism and you applied for a journalist role, you get the journalist role, and then you'll say, oh, I can actually help out with um, this particular, I don't know, guides video on this is how to get, I don't play Genshin Impact, but like <laughs> some, something in Genshin, Gen, Genshin Impact. Um, yeah, you become a much more like um, attractive and like much more valuable like kind of candidate in the pool of like a very large pool of people. Um, and I would say that like as um, video content because becomes much more, um, kind of prescient, but much more um, prevalent in how we talk about games and how we communicate our love for games. Um, and like through trailers, you know, um, Sony State of Play is just constant trailers, um, which all just get everybody very, very excited about the games that are coming out. Um, being able to take those and having the skills just in your back pocket already um, becomes something very like attractive to like someone who's hiring because they kind of get a two for one sort of situation. <laughs> um, so yeah, like like you say, video editing is a really good good idea to get into, um, and really hone your skills on that side. Um, yeah, I would say definitely keep doing that. <laughs> Not every site will will you know uh, value it, but plenty will. Um, lots of sites have been making a pivot to video and all of that, and and lots of sites value it a lot. So it'll send you in good stead for sure, but. Um, there are some sites which aren't quite as active on video. It's just something to bear in mind, I guess. Thank you. Um, I, think, I think we'll probably have to wrap it there. Sorry if there were any more questions. But um, I'm not on the next panel, so you know, come and grab me or waylay me and anyone else. Um, we're happy to uh, talk uh, to all of you. Um, I'm just going to check the schedule for the next one. Um, you can you remember what it was, Joe? Five o'clock. No. 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 <laughs> That's embarrassing. I had it. It's um, a surprise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yes, safe spaces in the physical age, how communities are navigating from um, digital to, uh, to physical spaces again, um, as we've all seen. Uh, thank you all so much for coming and for all your questions. Um, stick around for that next one. Uh, and yeah, I won't ask for a round of applause because it's us who's been speaking. So <laughs> thanks, everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Cheers. <laughs>